Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuhu. Hope you're all doing well, inshallah. So we ended off the last discussion by understanding how much Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves us, yet many of us, including myself, are ungrateful and do not love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala back. We also spoke briefly about how our heart and mind is a control center of our body, and we left you with some practical tips on how to protect yourself, with the last one being through prayer, because, you know, prayer is our worldly meeting with our Creator. So today we just want to give you some more practical tips on how you can make the most of your worldly meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tip number one, get in the zone and control your thoughts. So basically, the state you're in before you start to pray will impact your prayer. So for example, if you're in the middle of watching a movie, for say, and you just put it on pause to do your two uh, rakahs, your attention is clearly divided, and that is going to show in your prayer as well. So we recommend that you spend at least one to two minutes just sitting in silence, breathing and clearing your mind, and mentally preparing yourself that you're about to go and stand before your creator, your sustainer. Try to envision yourself doing this as if you just died, or you're standing there on the day of judgment. Do you think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be pleased with you or disappointed in you? What do you think will happen when your book of deeds is opened and not a millisecond of your life will be spared? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is blessing us with an opportunity to turn our sins into good deeds, to repent and come closer to Him in this dunya. And this is a privilege, guys. You have no guarantee that you will even finish your prayer today. So hopefully your heart and mind will be filled with gratitude for being provided with such an opportunity, as indeed it is a privilege to be able to stand before our Creator in this world and still have that opportunity to seek His forgiveness and mercy. Tip number two, making wudu. So mentally you're in the zone now and you're about to begin to make your wudu. Realize that each action is a means of cleansing yourself physically and spiritually. Seek forgiveness for any sins that you may have done with your limbs, anything you may have said or eaten that was not pure for all the time you extended your arms to do wrong, or the multitude of thoughts that enter your mind, or the ill speech you may have heard from your ears, or the times your neck did a double take, or for your own desires. Basically, pray that you only use your body moving forward to do good. And as you finish your wudu, inshallah, you will feel rejuvenated with a cleansed mind, body, and soul. Inshallah. All right, tip number three. Now you're walking towards the place you're about to pray. Inshallah, your mind is clear, the brain waves are in a relaxed state of meditation, and realize you're walking to stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who created you and blessed you with the opportunity to have this conversation with Him. Try to realize how much Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you and all the blessings given to you with the most important one, guys, being our iman, because we still have our iman. And as you stand there, envision that heaven is to your right and hellfire is burning to your left. And the angel of death, this guy is right behind you and is there. And this is your last opportunity in this world to speak to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So as you raise your hands up, leave the world behind you and realize you're standing before Allah, the creator of you, this world, the universe, and everything inside of it. So now we're in our prayer, and we're super, super close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, hopefully. But guess who's super, super jealous? Iblis, of course. So now he's like, how can I put myself in between them? Total kabab mehar diye. So he's going to do what he can to come in between this amazing bond that you're creating, this conversation we're about to embark on. But guys, if you want something badly enough, you will do what you can for it. So we got to fight off shaitan. And every fight can be won, not by physical strength, but mental power, tactic, being composed and calm. Now this is not going to be easy and you need to train your brain and constantly remind yourself that you are standing that you standing there is a privilege and this may be your last opportunity to have this discussion with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this world. Think to yourself, how messed up can I be that if I'm in this world by his permission and I'm here standing before him by his permission and here I am distracted by the world. Basically, you need to engage in what we call thought-stopping behavior. And this is hard, but I know it's achievable. You just need to train your brain. It's possible to do. You just need to be alert and mentally ready that you're up for a fight and the keys to winning this is to stay calm, composed with a strategy in mind. Okay, I'm not going to go into the physiological or psychological piece of this. I'm totally amazed by it though, eh? But inshallah, some other time. 
For now, just realize you can do it. And every time you feel yourself trailing away in prayer or you realize you're rushing through your prayer, stop, breathe, regroup, and move forward. This will not happen overnight, but I, what I can say for sure is that it will happen if you want it to, though. We can all do it. Make the intention and drop down into sujood and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help you in your quest to build that bond with Him in this world so that you will be amongst the closest to Him in the next world, inshallah. Okay, take home message for today, guys. Consolidate into your heart and mind that any second you will be having a one on one meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in an alternate world, but you currently have the opportunity to have this meeting in this world while you're still in your comfort zone and you can easily converse with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And honestly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves hearing from us. He wants to meet with us, He loves us, He keeps giving and forgiving us, and we keep getting and forgetting and neglecting Him. Guys, if the person you love calls you, how quickly do you answer? What happens to you when you can't talk or right away? The next free minute, I'm sure you're dialing their number. Those feelings of love, the ability to talk and have that person in your life is a blessing in and of itself. So why aren't you in love with the one who has blessed you beyond belief? Guys, fall in love with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the way He loves us. Protect yourself and remove everything from your life that is coming in between that bond. Trust me. If you nurture that bond with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, everything in this world will also fall into place. And you'll find yourself with an aura of peace around you. And every time, inshallah, when we stand in salah, it will be as if we were already in Jannah. Pray each prayer as if it's your last. And every time you forget about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just take a deep breath. And inshallah, the oxygen alone will fill you with humility and make you grateful towards the one who keeps giving and forgiving while we just keep getting and forgetting. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.